Hello everyone, Zaid from Zaid Security here and in today's video we're gonna introduce you to Hack the Box so you can practice hacking legally. Hack the Box is a platform that contains a number of machines for you to hack. You can do all of this legally and it gamifies the whole process of hacking and practicing hacking. It has leaderboards and lots and lots of cool stuff. Now before we get into this video, as you can see we're approaching 100,000 subscribers. Thank you so so much for your love and for your support. So for the next video, I want you to tell me what you want me to do. I'm gonna include a link in the description of this video, use the link to suggest ideas and vote for the idea that you like the most and I'm gonna make a video on the idea that gets the most votes as long as it's legal. And as usual, there is another link in the description for you to participate in our giveaways. We're gonna be given free access to one of my courses in two weeks before the release of the next video. And as usual, like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, show us some love, and let's go. Now, at the start of the video, I said that we will introduce you and not I will introduce you because one of my teaching assistants, Dimitris, is actually gonna walk you throughout the whole video and I will be commenting on some stuff just to add my two cents. So first of all, we're gonna show you how to sign up to Hack the Box because signing up to it is not very simple. It's actually done in a way to challenge you. So even signing up is a bit of a challenge. The sign up page is hidden and you have to hack your way around to find it. Then he's gonna give you an overview of the platform and show you how to connect and hack one of the machines. So basically he's gonna walk you through a full challenge. So I'll hand it over to Ektos. Hello everyone, Dimitris from Z Security here and in this video I'm going to show you how to register to hack the box and how to exploit the first machine called Lame. So let's get started. After accessing the hackthebox.eu slash invite page, we are prompted with this. We have to hack our way in in order to get the invite code. So let's say we want some help. It says you could check the console, so I'm just gonna fire up the, the Chrome console with the F12 key. We can see here that it says this page loads an interesting JavaScript file. See if you can find it. So I'm just going to go to the sources page and then in the JavaScript category. And there is two files here. We can see the front end file and then the invite API file. I'm just going to start with this one since it's a bit smaller. So here, in, here we can see that it says this JavaScript code looks strange. Is it obfuscated? So let's just have a look on it. There's nothing uh, interesting going on here. Let's check here. And yes, indeed, there is something that we could check. It says function console log make invite code. So I'm assuming this make invite code is a command for the console. So I'm just going to go ahead and type make invite code. And yes, this is a valid uh, command. And we can see here that it says data is encrypted. We should probably check the encryption type in order to decrypt it. We can see that it says road 13. So there is no point for us to actually check the encryption type. It's written down there. So I'm just going to copy this and then go to road 13.com. I'm going to paste the hash here. And then it says in order to generate an invite code, make a post request to API invite generate. So let's copy this directory and then we can copy the URL, open up a command prompt. You can open it by doing CMD and you can see it right here. I'm going to type curl X post, which this is the command that generates a post request on that page. I'm going to paste the URL right here press enter and we can see the encoded string. I'm going to copy this encoded string and then go to a hash identifier to check the hash, the hash type. We can see that the possible algorithm is a base 64. So I'm going to a base 64 T code page. I'm going to paste the, the hash right here. I'm going to press on decode and there we go. Here is our invite code. I'm going to copy it, go back to invite. I'm 
and I'm gonna close the console. I'm gonna paste the uh, invite code and I'm gonna sign up. And there we go. If you follow the instructions correctly, you should be in this page as well. So if you did congratulations, you can now put your credentials here and then register. Now you can also discover this path by using a tool like Derb as shown in my courses. So all you would have to do is Derb followed by the target website, which is hackthebox.eu and it should discover this. Or even simpler, you can even use Google and simply search for hack the box registration and you will find it. But that's no fun. What Dimitri showed you is actually much more fun and you would learn something new as you're doing it and feel accomplished. Anyway, let's go back to Dimitri's to get an overview of the platform and see how to connect to a machine, hack it and solve a challenge. So after you're done with the registration page, you're good to exploit the first machine. So let's just go and do just that. I'm just going to switch to Kali and I'm going to access the hack the box page. Well, it seems like I was not logged in. And there we go. I'm logged into my account and this is the dashboard that you will be prompted to after you uh, log in for the first time. So after going to the machines and then uh, clicking on, on all, going to the retired machines, we can see the first machine here. You'll have access to these machines for now because I have the VIP uh, access. I get uh, access to the retired machines as well. So let's just hack this machine. If the machine was not running, we would have to click start here, but it's already running. So I'm going to connect to the VPN before I do anything. Um, so in the access page, you have to download the VPN connection pack that allows you access to the network of the machines. So I have already downloaded it and I have moved it to this directory, which is called hack the box. And I'm going to do open VPN and the name of the file, which is ictos.ovpn. If you see initialization sequence completed, means that you actually connected. And we can check that if you do if config tan0. Tan0 is the interface that you should have after connecting to the VPN. And this is our IP inside the network, and that is great. So I'm just going to close this. And I have made three tabs in my Kali terminal. The one is going to be called VPN. And this one is going to be called Nmap because we're just going to run an Nmap script. Now to hack this machine, Dimitris is going to follow a very common strategy that I actually cover in my basic ethical hacking course. First, you try to discover all of the open ports and the services running on the target system, research every single service, and if it's vulnerable, exploit it. So he's going to use nmap to discover the open ports and the services and he's going to continue with the rest of the steps and you'll see how he's going to be able to gain full access to this computer. I'm going to run the nmap script live so I'm going to do nmap-sv which probes the open ports dash a to enable os detection and dash on to output the, the results to a file so I'm just going to call the file lame.txt 10 10 10.3 and that's the IP of the machine as we can see here. Let's go back to the machines. You can see that the IP is indeed 10.10.10.3. 10, 10 so now I'm just going to run the end map scan. Hopefully it doesn't take that long. Great. Now that we have the uh, scan result, our next step is to search for vulnerab vulnerabilities in the discovered services. So we can start with VSFTPD. Uh, it has anonymous FTP uh, login. This essentially allows the users to access the web ser the, the, the server with the username anonymous and with no uh, password, but we have limited access to it. So I doubt this will get us anywhere. So I'm just going to leave it for now. We can see OpenSSH 4.7, which I doubt this is vulnerable. And we have Samba 3.x to 4.x. So this essentially means that this version of Samba could be anything from 3 point something to 4 point something, which is really useful to know. And we can try Samba. And I know that in Metasploit, there are many Samba exploits for 3 point something versions. So I'm going to run MSF console here. 
and we're gonna search for scripts and exploits on Samba 3.x versions. So it's starting. There we go. So I'm just gonna do search for Samba. There we go. So now searching for excellent rated exploits on Samba, we can see this first one, which is an arbitrary module load. We can try to search for more info on it. So I'm just gonna do info. So in the description, it says this module triggers an arbitrary search library load vulnerability in Samba versions 3.5.0 to 4.4.14. This module requires valid credentials. Uh, so we can't use this because we don't have any valid credentials. So we're just gonna look for the second excellent rated exploit and we can see this Samba username map script command execution. So let's just info this exploit. And we can see in the description, it says this module exploits a command execution vulnerability in Samba versions 3.0.20, 3.0.25 RC3. Uh, when using a non-default uh, username map script configuration option. So this could be useful, assuming that the version of Samba is 3.0.20 to 3.0.25, because it says here that it's 3.x or 4.x, we can't really know. So assuming it's one of these, we can give it a go. It's worth giving it a go. So I'm just gonna do use this exploit, show the options, and we can see that we have to set the R host, which in our case, it's 10.10.3. 10, 10 and I'm just gonna do exploit and see if we get anywhere. There we go, we have a command cell session open. Uh, if we do ID, we can see that indeed we are root and we have successfully exploited this machine. So right now, Dimitris have full access over this computer and he can do whatever he wants on it. In the next step, he's simply gonna use Linux commands to access the user and the root directories and read the contents of a specific file. He's only doing this to complete the challenge because the contents of these files need to be submitted to hack the box so they can verify that he actually hacked into the user and into the root, he got root privileges, and therefore they will give him points for doing that. And like I said, because hack the box gamifies the whole process, they will give him points for it and they will add him to the lead leaderboard and obviously when you get a lot of points you get higher on the leaderboard and so on. But in a real life scenario you actually don't need to do this, you have gained access to your computer so if you're doing a pen test you need to write the report right now. Sometimes part of the pen tests you also need to read specific files but the idea is right now he basically gained full control over the target and he managed to hack it. So if we do pwd and ls we have to find the user.txt and the root.txt files. So I'm just gonna do cd home to find the users. cd macis, which is the user here, and ls again, and there we go. Here is the user.txt file, so I'm just gonna do cut user.txt. And there we go, this is the flag, the first flag that we need. And I'm going to put it here to and I'm, I'm, I'm gonna rate it the difficulty to one. I'm, I'm getting an error because I've already done this machine, but you would not get an error up here. So let's go back here, ls again, and cd to root, as you can see here. ls again, and we can see the root.txt file, so I'm just gonna do root.txt, cat root.txt, and we found the root uh, flag as well, which can be added here the same way we did with the user flag and lame root is already owned. So that's it guys. Thank you very much Dimitris for sharing your knowledge. I hope you like the video and find it useful. Don't forget to use the link in the description to tell me what to do in the next video when we hit 100,000 subscribers. And don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell to stay updated with the latest in cybersecurity.